visit. So we're here at, uh, at the Embedded World 2015, and uh, who are you? Well, my name is Thomas Sagé. I am the product manager of the Cortex M family of processors. And uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Diaz Subra. I'm the product manager for the Cortex M3. So, the Embedded World and uh, the Cortex M. What is the Cortex M for the Embedded World? Well, today is becoming the, the standard core, pouring all the, our partners, uh, MCUs or, or SOCs. Um, if you look today, most of the stands have at least one or more Cortex M based products on the, on the show. Um, maybe a news here we, we have just breached the, the 10 billion uh, parts um, being How shipped. many billion? 10 billion. 10 billion, 10 billion parts Cortex being shipped. M. Cortex M based products, yeah, shipped by our partners. So it's a, it's a good achievement knowing we, we just joined the, the MCU play not even 10 years ago. And it's just going faster and faster and more and more. Yes, it's shipping. actually going faster and faster because now for Embedded it's all about software. So either you have an army of people writing software on the old MCUs or you just do now sophisticated software on top of a 32-bit microcontroller like the Cortex-M family allows you to create. So it's basically all about software. And so around here basically every booth has ARM stuff, pretty Most much. Of them, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a great standard for the embedded world, right? Yeah, I think it's, in the end, it's all about making, making the development uh, easier and faster. Okay, so the differentiation on the core didn't show much value in the past. And now our partners, and especially their customers, can develop much faster, can innovate much faster um, using the wide, uh, wide ecosystem we have around Cortex M in terms of tools, in terms of our libraries, on all the shared solutions. And the prices are great, right? I mean, uh, 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 what I'm hearing, I'm not sure, but some of them might be saying, ah, we wish we would have gone to ARM quicker, earlier, some of them, right? Yeah, I think if you look at the partners who have been very early to, to join the, the Cortex-M uh, party, I think they are the one today who have uh, the, the biggest portfolio, who have the, the biggest market share, and indeed I think there's a, a good traction behind it. So how is the Cortex-M compared to some of the other uh, microcontroller stuff that, that has maybe has been there before or that's still there. Uh, how how can you c compare them? Yeah, so I think from from the start when we, we designed the Cortex M it was almost uh, the very first one means the Cortex M3 uh, almost ten years ago. Uh, there were um, key drivers. Um, Isofuse were one of them, very important. Okay, how can I easily develop my code? How can I easily debug my code? Um, low power uh, and still very. I had a level of performance. I mean, 10 years ago, it was not obvious that people would be using, or most people would be using 32-bit processors, and now it's just coming reality. So how about the 64-bit embedded? No, I'm joking. Yeah, no, we've talked to many partners in this space. 64-bit for embedded seems to be far, far in the future. But right now, the everything is 32-bit. Remember, there's a large volume of embedded systems all shipping with 8-bit microcontrollers. So first you have to take these hundreds of thousands of designs and move them up to 32-bit. And who knows, maybe in the future we talk again about that. And that's a big jump already. And I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing some, some people showing really imp interesting app stores for our Cortex-M stuff. And there's a new stuff coming. There's uh, and, and, uh, some, some new like giant amounts of internet things coming out soon. Yes, yeah, so definitely. I think, uh, as, we may, as we mentioned by Dia, um, it's all about software. I mean, we are we're leading the foundation of ease of use, uh, the engine. We can run solar software. And we will see more and more people bring more and more value around software. So you see more and more complex stacks. Uh, you have seen maybe the Embed OS, for example, uh, which is uh, being announced by, by ARM. These are all the things we, we are creating more value just beyond the pure uh, silicon, beyond the, the pure peripherals. Is here, how can I create an application uh, in, a, in a snap, snap of, of a finger? And it's going to be secure? Uh, There's some people coming with new and the thread? For, for IoT, I mean, there won't be any IoT without security. So definitely one of the key aspects of IoT will be security and, and low power. To be the, the two big pilots. And uh, so one of the cool highlights I've been looking at around here is uh, a couple of uh, companies showing Cortex M7. Yes. So this is a uh, high performance stuff, right? Yeah, so here we're very happy. We've just released the core, or announced the core, in fact, a few months ago. 
and now we have already uh, three partners uh, going public with their, with their products. So, so we have the, the product from ST Micro, the product from, uh, from Atmel, and also Freescale announcing the, the Key V5 uh, family. So uh, very fast traction, uh, very fast deployment and giving access to their parts of their customers to the latest ARM core. And what's the idea behind the M7? Is it just more performance? Yeah, because basically you, you have seen a huge success around Cortex-M. And people love the architecture, people love the, the low power, people love the low latency, uh, the fast real time. And they wanted to give uh, the, the next level of, of performance. Some people were already using all the performance around the, the M4 and wanted to get more without having to, to jump to Cortex-R or Cortex-A processor. Wanted to see the same family. And this is exactly what we are offering with the Cortex-M7, is a, a boost of performance uh, for the next uh, generation of applications. And I've also been seeing some really cool Cortex-M0 Plus stuff. And uh, people saying that it has 10-year battery life. It's pretty cool, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, you may keep in mind the the M0 and the M0 Plus are the lowest possible power 32-bit uh, processor on the market today, right? So this thing was designed from the start to be the lowest, highest energy efficient processor you can get in a 32-bit um, envelope. So you can still do the same sort of software, and this is where, as, as Tamar was saying, so you can take that same software now from the M0 all the way up to the, say, to the M7, and you're still in that same environment. You don't have to go switch architectures or have to go switch processors or anything. You're in that same family and you're taking your software along with you. Some apps just work on everything. All the apps are forward compatible, which means if you take a binary application from the Cortex-M0, it will also run on the M7 because what you're doing is you're getting more sophisticated um, instructions, but they all share the same memory uh, definition. And that was all done on purpose by design to allow, again, people to use and reuse their software, which is now the key element that people care about. And this, uh, so how did, how did you do this design to make it the lowest power 32-bit? Oh, what, what went into that? These are our engineers. Yeah, I mean, these are, these are our genius. Um, I think, first of all, is to, to really understand the system. Because the core is one thing, but your core has to, to interact very well with the system. And I think also where, where I would like to highlight here on the M0 Plus, for example, where what we see is a lot of, uh, of innovation from our partners how to make the complete system low power. In the sense, it's not about the processor, it's about um, the peripherals, how they interact, how the imper peripheral can work while the processor is maybe in lower power modes. Um, it's also about some partners going uh, forward in terms of process of technology. We have a company like MBIC, for example, um, releasing the devices using uh, sub threshold uh, technologies. So it's all this differentiation around the core um, to attack and to solve the local problem from different angles. So yes, there's a lot of, uh, of, uh, of know-how from ARM since more than 20 years about making a very low power processor design, how to, to avoid a given gate to, to switch and to, to, use, to use power. But it's also uh, working closely with our partners how to, to tackle the low power challenge altogether. And the new nanometers, uh, smaller and smaller, also helps, right? It or does, is there a limit? yes and no, yes and no. I think if you look at the, the parts which are the, the lowest power today, uh, they are not always at the forefront of the, of the process. So the reason behind is with the, the smaller processes, your, your leakage will go higher. So for low power, and as most of the applications will be active only a few percent of the time, um, what's almost more important is the, the leakages. When the... Um, the processor is in sleep mode, for example, and um, today I think the sweet spots are still around maybe 90 nanometer or 65 nanometers, and this is where you will find most of the uh, lowest power M0 Plus uh, being, being produced. Is the advantage also that all the Cortex-A software is kind of compatible with the M software? Some of it, somehow? So, so you don't really have a, a direct compatibility. Um, but in fact, there are a lot of parallelism. Um, Cortex-M is a subset of the uh, integration set of the Cortex-A, uh, so a subset in terms of functionalities. The good thing is um, we are 
enjoying the fact we have so, so many partners, so many tool partners um, around Cortex A, which also adopted very quickly Cortex M. So here it's a it's the same environment. You can target either Cortex A or Cortex M, but it's not directly linked to the pure binary compatibility. I also saw some cool stuff here at the show. Some companies are combining A and M. Like uh, I saw the Freescale booth. Correct. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, it's, it's bringing the both of the best world together. On the on the Cortex A, um, you can run very rich OS operating system like, like Android, for example, or Linux. You can give a very rich uh, customer experience uh, with a very nice uh, human interfaces. While the Cortex M is much more optimized for for real time, so hard real time, where we can be very very fast interacting for communication protocol. So you, you will see them combining both of them to get uh, the best of both worlds. Maybe more and more of that. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and the Cortex-M could be also still active while the Cortex-A is put in a, in a power down mode to save power at the SOC level. And what's the Cortex-R? Oh! That's so, another segment? Yes, yes. So you have the... Uh, it's, uh, it's around here, this fair also? Yes, it is. So we have the three families. The Cortex-A for application processors, the Cortex-R for for let's say high performance real time, and you have the Cortex M meant for embedded or let's say macro controllers. The Cortex R, for example, is uh, is heavily used in uh, applications like like storage, like uh, automotive powertrain, or for example like uh, telecommunication infrastructure, like like base stations. Um, these are processors are able to run at very high frequencies, okay, so much higher than Cortex M. Um, and we, this processor are also better fitted for real time than the Cortex A, for example. All right. So there's also some of that being used combination with the A or with the M, or yes, people can mix what they want. Currently, we, you will find most of them um, indeed combining combination of Cortex R and Cortex M in, uh, in storage applications, for example, in the SSD. So I think maybe this show is not the best fair for for solid state uh, solid state uh, storage devices, but um, you find them in automotive, for example. So you've been very busy around here at this fair, and this is a uh, really cool, and lots of meetings, and lots of things are happening. Definitely, we're just running from one meeting to the next one, and uh, I think we're almost late for the next one, dear. Yeah. So